In December 2018, an event took place just off the coast of Britain that, surprisingly, went largely under the radar. It all started on the 10th of December 2018 when the Italian cargo ship Grande Tima departed the Nigerian port of Lagos for the British port of Tilbury in East London. For the ship's 27-man crew, the voyage was like most others until it began navigating its way into the Thames estuary off the coast of Margate on the 21st of December. At approximately 0915, British authorities received a mayday call from the ship and were notified that four men had seized control over the vessel. The four men had snuck aboard the ship shortly before its departure from Nigeria and, appearing from the onboard cargo armed with whatever objects they could find, they demanded that the captain steer the Grande Tima towards the British coastline. The captain refused the demand and was able to lock himself and the other 26 members of his crew into a room on board the ship from where they were able to keep in contact with the British authorities. It was not long before news of the situation reached the Ministry of Defence, who were authorised to dispatch of four men of the SCS to the scene from their garrison in Herefordshire. The small group, operating under the call sign of Titan 21, flew to the Dover Coast Guard Operations Centre on board a 658 Squadron Army Air Corps Dolphin helicopter, arriving in the afternoon of the 21st. Here they were briefed on the situation and acted as the forward observers for the UK Special Forces. Simultaneously, the MOD began moving a response group forward to the scene, in the event that military intervention was required. This group began its move forward just after midday, when four Royal Navy helicopters took off from RNAS Yeovilton in Somerset. The helicopters flew southeast to Poole, where they embarked 20 men of X Squadron the Special Boat Service. From Paul, the task force then moved to Manston in the southeast of England, from where they established a forward operating base in anticipation for the green light to go in. Until that was authorised, however, negotiations continued with the hijackers, who navigated the Grand Teamer around in circles throughout the afternoon and into the evening. Eventually, after 12 hours, the situation reached a critical point, and Prime Minister Theresa May gave the green light for a military operation, codenamed Operation Buckthorn. Equipped with their rifles and night vision goggles, the 20 men from X Squadron began boarding their awaiting Royal Navy helicopters at approximately 22.30. The helicopter force operated under the call sign of Renegade and consisted of two Wildcat and two Merlin helicopters. The Wildcats came from 815 Naval Air Squadron and operated under the call signs of Renegade 1 and 2. Their role was to escort the Merlins throughout the duration of Buckthorn. The Merlin helicopters, meanwhile, were from 845 Naval Air Squadron and were designated Renegade 3 and 4. It was the job of the Merlins to lift the Special Boat Service operators to and from the objective. The force took off from Manston at 22.45 on the 21st of December and began flying across the Thames estuary from where they could see the Grand Tima on the horizon. Flying into the target area, the Wildcats detached from the main body and began circling the cargo ship. Meanwhile, Renegades 3 and 4 made their final approach to the target, before hovering above the vessel's main section. The exact timings of this phase of the operation are unclear, but as we can see from this image capture, Renegade 3 was above the Grand Tima at 11.26pm. With the pilots keeping the aircraft steady, the 20 SBS operators fast roped down from the Merlins and onto the decks of the ship. Forming up into their respective teams, the SBS began sweeping through the Gland Teamer before reaching the bridge of the ship. Forcing their way into the cabin, the operators found the hijackers, who immediately surrendered upon seeing the British troops, thus bringing a successful end to Operation Buckthorn, just five minutes after it had started. With the cargo ship under control, arrangements were made for it to continue the final leg of its journey to Tilbury, where it finally moored up in the early morning hours of the 22nd of December. 
Having accomplished their mission, the 20 operators from X Squadron re-embarked onto their Merlin helicopters and were flown back to their garrison near Poole as silently and swiftly as they had arrived on the scene. <laughs>